Hi, I'm Patrick Dunnikin. At Gibbons, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the complex issues that affect their lives. That's why we're proud to support the programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, PSENG, committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. The law firm of Gibbons PC. NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters. Your future is in our building. International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825. Fedway Associates. And by Suez, water solutions to meet tomorrow's environmental challenges. Promotional support provided by NJ Advance Media. And by ROINJ, informing and connecting businesses in New Jersey. Welcome to State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from the NJTV, Agnes Ferris Studio in beautiful Newark, New Jersey. That's right. He's here. He is John Bramnick. He's the Assembly Republican leader um, in the 21st Legislative District. Let me ask you this. All the attention on you, a lot of money in your race, Democrats coming at you on one end, right-wing Republicans coming at you on the other end. Some people said it was going to be over for John Bramnick. What happened? I think just common sense prevailed. You know, they knew me in the district. They know I'm not crazy. I'm not an extremist. And I think in today's world, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who's, in my judgment, just a moderate, reasonable, decent human being. Tough to find in politics today. And also, you're reelected as a Republican assembly leader. We should clarify that as well. In the minority party. Curious about this. A lot of the names thrown around in your district. How important was the influence of President Trump in your election? Uh, well, it didn't play a big role this time. Murphy, Governor Murphy actually played a big role. When he said... He wasn't on the ballot. No, no, big role. Because he went out and he said, if taxes are your main issue, New Jersey's not for you. Now, is, do you want to send him two more votes? And I think people said, you know, I think I like balance in Trenton. I don't think Governor Murphy's tax policy needs two more votes. I think that played much larger than Trump. Trump is yeah. not popular in my district. And by the way, if you check out our previous interviews with Assemblyman Bradnick, you'll hear the very candid comments that he's made about the president, and particularly about and, tone and demeanor. And, and I'll continue to say it, and I'm not afraid. And actually, they threatened me that if I didn't regret what I said about the president, they would run against me from the right. I said, bring it on. That's exactly what I said Why are here. so many of your colleagues, I'll come back to Murphy in a second, why are so many of your colleagues in the Republican Party, particularly in Congress, look, we're doing this program in the middle of November. We know what's going on. This will be seen after that. Why are so many of your congressional Republican colleagues appear to be? So reluctant to say anything negative, question anything about President Trump. Because of what happened to me. Uh, two people said they were the Trump Republicans, and they ran in a general election. Meaning you weren't the real Republican, Trump well, Republican. Well, you're asking me why the Congress, Republican Congress people will not speak out. It's because so-called, these so-called right-wing people run against you. But I was speaking out against, he called people names, he called Republicans scum, he called John McCain a, a loser. Let me tell you, that has nothing to do with politics. That's basic de decency. And I called it out, and I'd do it again. I'm not, I'm not afraid to call out somebody in my party when they're talking about that. I never say anything about 3% unemployment, which I like. So my point You're is... You're not talking about Trump's policy so much. It's his tone and demeanor. Don't call people names. I learned that in third grade in Cedarbrook School in Plainfield, New Jersey. Pretty simple, right? Don't do it. And if you're afraid to call somebody out when they're calling people names, I got a problem with you. So the Murphy piece. I interviewed um, Governor Murphy. We'll have him here in this studio. But I interviewed him on the air, and uh, I was uh, radio uh, hosting at uh, AM 970, which you know well, <laughs> uh, subbing for our friend Joe, Joe Piscopo. Piscopo. And the governor was good enough to join us. And I asked him about that quote, in which I believe, I'm going to get this right, he said, if taxes are the issue or one of the main issues, uh, then for you, then maybe New Jersey's not the state for you. Do I have that right? Well, it's close enough. But the only important issue here is you could say, you know, I'm going to do what I can about taxes. 
don't act like, well, taxes are your issue. I'm, you, you should move. What you should say is, listen, I understand taxes. He didn't say you should move. He said maybe New Jersey's not the state for How you. How about saying I'm going to do what I can to control taxes? Why don't you say that? Because I'll tell you what he said to me in that radio program, which I'm confident he'll say here yeah. because he hasn't changed his view. He said, look, Steve. I don't want to raise taxes, but I want fair taxes. I want taxes that are fair in New Jersey. So and those that. who have more, a million dollars or more, are making every dollar over a million dollars, we're going to raise it, your taxes, so that we can fund other programs like universal pre-K <laughs> and other initiatives. You say? I say that's what he should have said. He should have talked about the millionaire's tax. It's always polled well. Right. Don't say New Jersey's not the place for you. I've spoken to working people who go like this. Wait a minute, I've been here my whole life. It's not the place for me. You know, people don't hear exactly what you say. They hear what they hear. So what I'm saying is, if he had said what Steve Adubato just said, we wouldn't have had a great issue against him. Now we do. Where do you think the governor is at the midpoint of his four-year Term. What has he done well, and where has well? You already made it clear where you no, think he hasn't no. done well on a tax he's issue. But go ahead. He's done well because he's very civil. He re returns everybody's messages. He's like you that way. He's respectful. With he's other a people. nice guy. He was in my house. Uh, you know, really nice guy. The problem is he's not talking to his own party. He says he's not transactional. Really. Well, you're now the governor, and you're trying to get something done. You have to negotiate at least with your own party. He's not even talking to his own party. He has a poor relationship with the leadership on the Democratic side. You're talking about he, Steve Sweeney in particular? And Senate I don't think President. it's great with Coughlin anymore either. The assembly I mean, speaker? He, especially when the governor intervened into assembly uh, elections. He put his face on TV through his New Direction PAC in the middle of our election. I loved it. I don't think Craig Coughlin loved it. The point is this. You have to be transactional. That's what politics is. He's in a progressive lane. He wants to do what he wants to do. He's making no friends. And you don't need friends. At least you need partners. Chris Christie, what did he do? Immediately started dealing with Steve Sweeney, got stuff done. You know, it's interesting. People call themselves Democrats and Republicans, but there are a lot of different versions of that, right, John? You, of course. And you're there are a Democrats moderate. I like and Republicans I like and Republicans I don't like and, and Democrats I don't like. Do you see, if we're looking at 2020, and I'm not big on prognostication and predicting elections, but in your view, has the Republican Party, because we had Governor Christie Whitman in here earlier today and said, she's a lifelong Republican, she doesn't relate to President Trump. No. You're a lifelong <laughs> Republican? Yeah, yeah. She's a lifelong, you're a lifelong Republican, you don't relate to him on certain issues. Right. And on, uh, excuse me, on tone and demeanor. Is the Republican Party, John Bramnick, at this point, simply the Trump Party? Absolutely not. In New it's Jersey, not. it's not. Okay, is New Jersey, if someone like you gets elected, you have other states across this nation where Republicans are locked shoulder to shoulder with the president, will not deviate at all, meaning they believe the Republican Party is the Trump Party. Is New Jersey that out of sync with the rest of the nation? Uh, I would say with respect to Republicans, yeah, I think we're a different brand of Republicans. I think we're a more moderate group than certain states that are 100% with Donald Trump. Uh, I think we agree on certain issues and disagree. But I think, obviously, Republicans in New Jersey generally tend to be more moderate. I've been at national conventions, and I think we're a little, little bit to the left of some of the Republicans. New Jersey is. General, but you saw Tom Kane Sr., yes. Chris, Chris Christie. He didn't run as a right wing. Actually, Steve Lonigan ran against him because he was too moderate. Uh, Tom Kane Sr., uh, he was an environmental champion. He was in, about inclusion. So I don't think that's what you're hearing through some mm -hmm. Republicans nationally. John Bramack, who is a Republican Assembly leader, let me ask you your top three issues in 2020 for the state legislature to deal with are? One, taxes. We've got to cap spending. Clearly, there should be a 2 percent cap. <clears throat> Second, Explain that. 2 percent well, cap. Well, right now, every town can't raise their budgets by more than 2 percent. State of New Jersey goes by, up by 11 percent in two years. We should be capped at 2 percent also. If that were to happen, how would you make pension payments into the public employee pension fund? How would you fund roads, bridges? How would you fund New Jersey transit? How would you do the things that everyone argues, universal pre-K, other things? How would you do that if there's a 2 percent cap? How do towns do it? Same issue. You have to sit down and you have to figure out what your priorities are, but you can't keep taxing people out of the state. Next, this affordable housing issue is no longer an affordable housing issue. It's court-imposed high-density housing, a complete, utter mess, putting pressure on schools, putting pressure on infrastructure, and raising property Those taxes. Those who are advocates, excuse me, if some of them argue they're just trying to create affordable housing. It's up to the legislature 
why would you turn that over to the courts? Because it's, the courts step in when they say the legislature hasn't acted. Exactly, and that's why the legislature take on the issue and take care of it. Why are, they def why are the Democrats in the legislature deferring to the courts? Why do you think? Well, because it's too dangerous. It's What's a hot dangerous about it? What's dangerous? <clears throat> the Republican, I'm sorry, the Democratic legislators from suburban districts are afraid of the issue. They are. You bet. It's a dangerous issue. <sighs> and third, it's always been... Go ahead. My, my, my third issue has always been uh, doing a demeanor in Trenton that we talk to each other uh, in a way that we can get some compromise of bipartisan. If you don't do that, mm -hmm. you can't get anything done. By the way, for like Shadow, how's your comedy career going? Good. Comedy's <laughs> good. I got some new material, actually, after this election, because they did $250,000 against me on TV. Yeah. That gave me all kinds of material, so I'll be at the Golden Nugget November 20th. Yeah, but you're not Headline. a full-time comedian. I'm gonna, you're a lawyer, <laughs> you're a legislator, <laughs> and you're part-time. Do, do the state senator joke real quick. Well, a state senator was pulled over by a trooper, and the trooper said, uh, license registration. The state senator, do you know who I am? And the trooper called down to headquarters and said, I got a guy here who doesn't know who he is. <laughs> you write this stuff yourself? Uh, no. Just, I, I steal it. <laughs> the funniest lawyer in New Jersey is also the Assembly Republican leader. John, thank you so much. Thanks, Steve. All the best to you and your family. You Thanks. Stay with us right back <laughs> after this. Doesn't know who he is. To watch more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media. This is uh, State Senator Patrick Dignan, who is the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee. Good to see you, Senator. Thanks for having me. How are we doing with New Jersey Transit? I just figured I'd jump I mean, right into it. I mean, it. I, know it's, I know it's easy to pile I'm on. I'm not making jokes. I'm just asking. <laughs> it's easy to pile on, Steve. Not... <laughs> and don't talk about how long it took no, you to I get just, here. I heard your train was late today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, what do you think, I don't want to say the problem, the primary problems are with New Jersey Transit? Well, let's be perfectly honest. Neglect. I mean, it had uh, at least four years of total neglect. Now, no uh, uh, training classes for engineers. Uh, diverting the money from the turnpike to for day-to-day uh, -day operations. I mean, n n positive traction control, positive train control hadn't even begun. I mean, the for, in, in full disclosure, the governor, the commissioner, the director were really let, left with a you-know-what problem when they came in. It sounds like you're putting this on the Christie administration. Isn't that too easy, respectfully, Senator? Well, <laughs> no, no, but, but do you really believe that that is the primary cause of where we are right now? Yes. With, with trains that are delayed, canceled, no communication or terrible communication, forget about the bus side. I mean, seriously, you're putting it all on Christie? Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's first of all, about 500,000 people a day take New Jersey, the buses and the trains. Right. We have the unique situation of a significant, probably more than half our population, works either in New York or uh, uh, Pennsylvania or yep. Philadelphia. So you have such a demand on the structure. We have the situation with the tunnel. You and I both know, they're talking about the one seat. They can't even uh, uh, approve any more one seats because there's no capacity in the tunnel. If Chris Christie, in, in fairness, and I like Chris Christie. You hear me because it was guy. against the tunnel, the no, arc tunnel? If the arc tunnel, it'd be done right well, now. What would it be? It'd be done. 10 years. It'd be, no. No, no, no. It was 10. It, but it was eight. They had okay. actually started acquiring the property when Chris what would Christie. Be, what would be in place right now if Christie hadn't done The Ark Tunnel be f done. Or, what or would that have to do that? with transportation? Well, it'd have to do with trains getting into New York City. I mean, and, and the one seat and all the other issues. I mean, is it a problem? Is it something that we need? I mean, I, I salute the Senate president and uh, the speaker for uh, having independent committees to let's get on this and let's all work together to get it done. Is it, is it a problem? Is it something that needs attention? Is it something that needs different points of view? Absolutely positive. So, by the way, let's be clear. There's a Senate Select Committee. Is that what Correct. it is? And I want to be clear on this. It is a committee that is established to do what? To basically listen to the riders. In fact, our first hearing is going to be uh, tomorrow night. In, We're in actually Hobart. taping on November 12th. This will okay, be okay. seen after that. Go okay, ahead. Okay, okay. And really basically get input from folks. Uh, yeah. Let's say tomorrow, let's say you and I took over New Jersey Transit tomorrow, and we decided we wanted to purchase 500 more trains and 300 more buses. It would take four or five years to get them, to get them delivered. You know, now the issue is with electric. Should we go electric or shouldn't we go electric with the school buses and, and the other buses? Of course we should. But they aren't even manufacturing them quickly enough. Is it a problem? Is it unacceptable? Yes, but it's not something that you just put a magic wand over. But, Senator, what about the whole question of the number of conductors? Mm -hmm. Right? Is it conductors that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. They're woefully short. Would everyone quit all at once? 
Well, that's what I'm saying. This, this is this is a, this is a crisis that has been uh, piling up, I and mean, it's actually engineers. We both. Oh, so engineers. I'm sorry. They're close enough. Engineers. <laughs> so they, they, we don't have enough engineers, mm. trained engineers. And I know that because NJTV News checked this out. Our colleagues here did a great story on a graduating class. So there are how many? What? Twenty or so. Uh, at the end of this year, it'll be forty more. Okay. And hopefully, by the end of next year, I think the number is 120. Where does that leave us? It leaves a big problem because l- last year, at this very date, when we had that snow event. The trains were delayed. The, en- the uh, uh, engineers can only work so many hours because of safety precautions. Right. So the next day, a disproportionate of, of engineers couldn't even come to work. They were prohibited from coming to work because of the safety issue. So we had chaos for several days in a row. It's, it's, it, is, it is a complication that you clearly we wish we could address in a second, but, but it's going to take time. But it's time. interesting, Senator. You're the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee, but all the Can't discussion so far... Up? Well, no, but <laughs> this is... The, it, but the entire discussion with me, <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty confident with others, is about New Jersey Transit. But to be head of the Transportation Committee in the Senate means roads, bridges, everything, right? Correct. What are we dealing with in, ter- in terms of the sexy word infrastructure? Mm-hmm. Bridges. Mm-hmm. Credible account as to how many of our bridges are either in disrepair, got a problem with, dangerous on, you pick your adjective. Where are we with them? They are right now in the process of evaluating those, and, and they're actually using the, the uh, Transportation Trust Fund money. One of the priorities is to, to for bridges. I mean, again, let's, let's just look at a real-life situation. Sure. Let's go back to trains for a second. I was at an event in North Brunswick the other day where... The state is putting $50 million into developing a train station in North Brunswick. We're do- talking about doing the same thing in Camden. We're talking about the light rail. I mean, there's so many various diverse issues that are going on. But I, I, I think the main thing you're saying, why are we having the hearings? I think the main thing is let's identify priorities, and it's going to take money, and we got to direct the money towards it. In fairness, $75 million was previously diverted from the Turnpike Authority, that is no longer being done. We put an extra $50 million in last year's budget for it to address transportation issues, but it's going to take time. I, I mean, I wish there was a so, magic formula. So we're actually today, as we're taping here at NJTV Studios, um, we're going to have the head of New Jersey Transit, Kevin Corbett, going to be talking to us. Right. Is his job right now in this particular, at this time, is it virtually impossible? No. Nothing's impossible. Okay, in terms of seeing tangible solutions, tangible improvements, I think this is what I hear you saying. Not anytime soon, because this is a long time coming. It's going to be a long time turning this around. That's what I'm hearing. Well, but, you know, I, I guess is the last half full or half empty. I mean, a lot has been accomplished. I mean, the positive train control, uh, getting the, the one seat back in place with the Westfield line, et cetera, the Princeton line, getting Atlantic City straightened up. I mean, it's the, uh, improving the New Brunswick train station, a whole bunch of other train stations. Elizabeth with, with the first one where we're actually going to do the, the project the design and work at the same time. So there actually has been progress, but it's frustrating. Let me ask you this uh, for the chat here. Do you foresee the folks in New Jersey Transit, the board, because I believe it's the board that does this, potentially calling for a fair increase this summer? Absolutely no idea. But but in all... Would you be against it? Here's my theory. If you said to the average commuter, you're going to pay an extra buck each way to go into the city or whatever, and it's going to be used and give tangible, real... Uh, results. With Here's, deadlines? With deadlines. I think they'd go along with it. With but, deadlines? With deadlines. As opposed to open-ended. One exactly. day, it's, we're going to try to be better. That's not good enough. Exactly. And I've always believed that. I've always believed that if the citizens know where the money is going, like the Transportation Trust Fund, the gas yes. tax. I ran the year with the gas tax. Everybody said, my God, you're Raising going, the gas yes. tax. Everybody said, you're, Pat, you're, you kiss your office goodbye. People understood what it was being used for. I won by a bigger majority than the year before. I've been listening to Senator Patrick Dignan, who is the chair of the Senate Transportation Committee, and uh, we look forward to having you back, Senator. Yeah. Okay. Well said. Good Keep job. up the good work. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. Thank you. To watch more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media. There she is, Zakia Smith Ellis, Secretary of Higher Education in the State of New Jersey. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Uh, you joined us many times. I want to jump right into a topic. Yeah. That's important. Higher education and economic success. What's the correlation? Why does it matter? Well, we know that 
students who graduate from college are more likely to get jobs, keep jobs, and it's a key part of New Jersey's economic success. Here, more than in other states, you have to have something beyond high school to really be able to be successful. A lot of employers are now asking for that. So we know that by 2025, something like 65% of new jobs are going to require some kind of post-secondary mm -hmm. credential. There's an initiative that we talked about a little bit last time. It is called Where Opportunity Meets Innovation. Is that the core of it? a student-centered division for higher education? Because there are five components of yeah. it. Break it down for us. Yeah, so there's, um, that's our state plan for higher education. We need to figure out how does higher education help uh, students get into the real economy? How mm. does it help prepare them for success? And how are our students contributing to the economic fabric of the state of New Jersey? Governor likes to call it connecting higher ed to the real economy, but I just call it you know good uh, work with students and making sure that students are successful. Five components to that plan. First is making sure that they have a strong transition from uh, high school to college. Not always easy. Yeah, not always easy. The next is affordability, which even if you're prepared, you got to be able to pay for it, which is not easy either. Without massive student debt. Without on the massive back end. student debt, we don't want students to have that burden of as much debt as they've had in the past. And then, how do you make sure that they're successful? So you might take on the debt, but if you take on the debt, you want to know that you're going to graduate, and you're going to graduate with a credential that's going to help you in your future. Um, and sometimes you need support to do that, so safe and supportive learning environments. We want students to be safe when they're on campus. And the last piece is about research, innovation, and talent, really making sure that it's not just about the students being successful um, in graduating, but what are they learning when they're there? Are they getting the kind of research opportunities that we know are really important in an area like New Jersey? You know, I don't know if I said this to you last time, but we've had um, some folks on, um, particularly Gary V. Mm -hmm, you ever hear Gary mm -hmm, V? Mm -hmm. Gary V is an yes. interesting motivational speaker. Yeah. And um, our producers and those who know our show remember the time he was with us. We had a very spirited debate and discussion about you saying it's overrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Higher ed is just overrated. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm a successful entrepreneur. College did not do it. You don't need it. You don't take that, all that money, whether it's 50 grand, 100 grand, right. 200 grand, whatever it is. Start a business, mm -hmm. you say. Well, I say he is an exceptional person, and that's fantastic, but he's the exception and not the rule. So I can't tell you, I can't guarantee you that if you go to college, definitely, absolutely, you'll never have any struggles in well, life. No can guarantee anyone anything. Exactly. No one can get, but I can tell you I would bet money on it. If you don't go to college, it's going to be a lot harder for you to have that success in life. So when, I t when you talk about the two options, should you go or should you not go, you know, for every one in a million, there may be that Bill Gates, that Gary Vee, that person that drops out and makes it well. But I can tell you, if you're a steward in Newark Public Schools right now, that your best bet is to go to college rather than to not go. You really believe that? I, do, I know it to be What's true. What's it done for you? Uh, it's been um, wonderful in my life. I mean, um, I'm a third generation college graduate, but my grandmother went to college in the 1950s as an African-American woman in South Carolina. Wow. Back before there was a Higher Education wow. Act, back before there were student loans. <laughs> back Why did she? <laughs> she what? did that because she was talented and because back then, you know, you wanted, she wanted to be a teacher. And if you wanted to be a teacher, you had to have a college degree. Right. And so that's what she did. And so I know that it allowed her a pathway out of poverty. And it's done that for millions and millions of other people. We know that from the data. I don't just know it from personal experience, but the data bears it out. If you have a college degree, you are much less likely to fall into poverty. You and much more likely to get a job that sustains you with a family sustaining wage. It's a good bet. It's a great bet. You know, the other thing I struggle with, because, again, not a new issue, mm -hmm. but keeping New Jersey's best mm -hmm brightest, hardest working students yep. mm -hmm. in the state. Yeah. Not easy. It's not easy. And it's been a long term issue. Yes. You go back and you look in the data and it's been something that New Jersey struggled with for some time. Um, and we're trying to figure out, part of one of the working groups is trying to think about why is that, what can we do? We're working with the President's Council, Joel Bloom, and... Yeah, Joel Bloom yeah. over at the New Jersey Institute at of Technology. New NJIT, yeah, we're working yep. with him and the whole group there to think about um, how can we market the state better for students so they can know about the options for going to college here that are really powerful. Do you, do you think what it's about, and we have a, a couple of kids in high school right now, and, mm -hmm. and I see, because I will talk about a lot of New Jersey schools, mm -hmm. And I could see the draw mm -hmm. for them. I could see the attraction, the whole idea of going out of state. Yeah. How do you deal with the whole question of the college experience, having a great mm -hmm. college experience here yeah. at home? Oh. 
Well, there's just so I have a cousin that's um, two that are college age right now, and what are you thinking saying? about them. Well, I oh, I tell them all the time, and they'll if they watch this, they'll know, um, and they'll watch it because I'll <laughs> tell them to watch it. I'll text it to them. But I say there's a lot of great colleges here that's that you right. just may not know about. So a lot of times we look. You're from a, you know a smaller state, and you say I don't want to be at home. But if you're from Cherry Hill, why not go up to Montclair? <laughs> that's going to feel right. like a world away. Um, if you're from you know Newark, why not go down to Rowan and Glassboro, or go to Atlantic City at Stockton? You've got a great new campus there. So there's a lot of differences that's going that away. people. That, it's really going away. It's outside of your comfort zone. And sometimes I just think you don't, we don't think about it like that. Um, but there's such a variety of colleges and universities here that sometimes we don't And a realize. lot of it's marketing and branding? I think some of it is marketing and branding. I think that a lot of other, now New Jersey's high schools are great. So we've got the number one school uh, system in the nation. That's right. Um, and so we have a lot of recruiters from other colleges from other states that come here to pick off our students. And they do a lot of marketing for our high school students. So they're very sought after. Zakia Smith. Ellis is the Secretary of Higher Education in the state of New Jersey. I want to thank you mm -hmm. for joining us. Yeah. We're smarter because you were here. Thank you. Thanks so much. Stay right there. I'm Steve Adubato. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, PSE&G, the law firm of Gibbons PC, NJ Best, Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, Fedway Associates, Suez, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ Advance Media, and by ROINJ. What is your child's dream for the future? Doctor? Teacher? Architect? Whatever they aspire to be, a college education may realize those dreams. And NJ Best can help. It's the college savings plan specifically designed for New Jersey families. Start saving today with as little as $25, because now is the time to invest in their future. To learn about NJ Best 529 College Savings Plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the investor handbook available at njbest.com.